everyone. Hope you guys are having a good Saturday. Popping on to uh, get a, a word out to you guys today. Um, and man, when I tell you the warfare on this word this morning was like next level, next level, <laughs> you guys. Um, so this must be for someone or something because it was like all I could do to get on here to get this out this morning. Um, I don't know if you guys like feel spiritual atmospheres, but it was just like next level today with this. Um, so I even uh, called <laughs> called for help. I called a friend to pray over this because I was like, my word, what is it about this word this morning? Um, so anyway, but I am popping on to get this out. Um, I feel like this is really important. Um, and it's a relatively simple concept of what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Um, but God was wanting me to hop on to talk to you guys about this subject today. Some prophecy is conditional in our personal lives based on our own personal place of obedience. Amen. And so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit. I've got some scripture out of the book of Esther. What's crazy is I had not planned on popping on today um, to talk about anything, but God just dropped some words, you know, this morning in a personal time with him. And um, some pretty specific words, pretty specific subject that he's wanting to bring up today. And so we're going to kind of chat through this together about this whole concept of some prophecy being conditional. And I've got some very specific examples for you guys. Um, and also, I just want to talk to you guys about God's heart behind the prophetic. Amen. I think that we get this skewed a lot of the time and we can confuse God's heart with what's actually the enemy being at work in our personal lives. And so I really want to just emphasize the nature of God and his love for you guys today, um, because I think that's so critical, the lens that we view things through to make sure that we're lined up with God's heart over different situations in our personal lives. Amen. And so we're talking about this concept today of some prophecy is conditional, dependent upon our obedience. Okay. And notice I said some, right? And so a lot of this has to do when it comes with, um, you know, just uh, the free will of people, right? To make decisions, right? God, you know, just like he does not force us to get saved in our personal lives, you know, he does not force us into places of obedience in our personal lives either. That's just not who he is. That's not what he does. Now, he always has a best will for us. Amen. You know, but he does not force us into things in our personal lives. And so he will fully allow you to make decisions in your personal life that are not in alignment with his original will. Amen. That's just kind of the way that he operates, but he will always guide you and try to warn you and to do stuff. But then if you choose a path of disobedience, he lets you go and do that. Amen. We see example after example of this in the Bible, you know, where God in mercy would warn a people group or would warn an individual and say, hey, this is my will. You need to walk in it. They picked a path of disobedience. They would either get turned over to the enemy and God would raise up something else or vice versa, you know? And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you guys about today and just the heart of God regarding all prophecy in our personal lives, right? So I wanted to start off by saying this phrase, okay? God does not tie you to people and to things that lead to disobedience and bondage in your personal life, okay? He does not tie you to that stuff, to people and to things that are making wrong decisions in their personal life because it's not the heart of who he is, amen? And so here's the deal. There was a very specific scripture that God wanted to re me to read you guys out of the book of Esther today. This comes from Esther um, 514. And I wanted to read this to you guys and to tell you guys that some of you guys have legit heard from situations from the Lord in your personal life regarding decisions, regarding things that he wanted you to step into. But how many of you guys know that it's not always that simple when, you know, there's multiple factors involved, right? God's been talking to me recently kind of about a um, more professional situation that's going on regarding this. So this can apply to multiple areas of our lives, right? Um, but just because God spoke it and it was his will, you know, people have to get in alignment with that will. Amen. And if that doesn't happen, and if there are certain people who are not obedient and who are not cooperated, God is not going to penalize the people who are being cooperative. And I wanted to show you this scripture out of the book of Esther to kind of kick us off today, because I think it illustrates this concept powerfully. Okay. And so 
basically this was Mordecai that was kind of talking to Esther and giving her her pep talk right before she was going to go and she was going to face the king and she was facing this decision on whether or not she was going to go to enter the king's court which could have meant her life it could have meant she was facing death right this was a big decision right and this was kind of his pep talk that he was giving her before she was making this decision of whether or not to choose God's will in this situation and to put her life on the line to stand up for the Jews or whether or not she was going to just keep her mouth shut and stay silent. And I want you guys to notice there was reward for being obedient and there were consequences for being disobedient, but God's will was still for it to be Esther to be used in this situation. Amen. But listen to this. I think this is really eye-opening and critical. So again, this is Esther 514. It says, for if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance shall arise for the Jews elsewhere. Think of the Jews being very symbolic in this. Amen. The Jews represent God's chosen people, the ones who are trying to be in a place of obedience. Amen. I want to read that phrase to you guys again, and I want you to catch this says, for if you keep silent, in other words, if you don't do what God is calling you to do in this situation, it's his will, Esther, for you to be used to help to bring deliverance to the Jews. God wants to use you in this capacity. Amen. But notice there's always an if. A lot of times prophecy has an if behind it. It can fully be God's will for him to use a person or a situation. But if they don't embrace that if of obedience, Sometimes God will raise up another in their place. He will, you know, move in a different way than you initially expected. And so this is what's going on in this situation. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance, notice that for the obedient parties, relief and deliverance was still going to come. Amen. God was not going to leave the obedient parties hanging in the midst of all of this, right? For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance shall arise for the Jews. In other words, God's still going to stand up and move for his chosen people. Amen. But you and your father's house will perish. Amen. And what's interesting is, you know, there are consequences for us not being obedient to the will of God. Amen. There are consequences for us not getting into alignment with the prophecy, with the things, with the, you know, will of God over our personal lives. But he never allows the person who is in alignment to be punished if they walk in a place of obedience. Amen. They're always going to end up being on the better side of things. Thankfully for Esther in this particular situation, she chose obedience in this circumstance. God was able to use her to deliver the Jews. But again, I want you guys to notice the very conditional nature of this prophecy. He was going, yes, Esther is it. I want to use you. You're the one that I picked for this particular role. But Esther, I've also given you a free will. Esther, I have also given you a choice and a decision in this matter. And you can pick wrong. I've given you a free will. I will allow you to pick wrong. It's only going to hurt you. It's not going to work out for your best interest if you do this. But I'm going to give you a decision Esther and you can either choose to stand up for me to represent my people and you'll be blessed the rest of your days or you can choose to not stand up for your people but I am still the defender of the Jews I am still the defender of my people and I will not leave them stranded and tied to dead things and tied to stuff that is not of my will and their personal lives God's going I will raise up relief and deliverance for the Jews from elsewhere think about this this can represent so many different things in our personal lives where God can raise up deliverance in a situation, even if something over here is not cooperating with him. Amen. And there is an expiration date on this stuff, ladies and gents. If Esther had not been willing to stand up for the Jews within a timely period, he would have raised up somebody else to get them out of that bondage and out of that situation. Because God's not just going to let his people suffer forever. That's not the heart of a good father. Amen. Is to keep you tied to dead things. Is to keep you tied to disobedient things. Is to keep you tied to things that are keeping you in a place of bondage. That is not who our God is. Amen. But he does give us a free will. And if we ourselves are not obedient to step into the God call and to the things that he has for our life, then we will reap the consequences. Notice that the consequence in this if-then clause behind this prophecy that was spoken over Esther when Mordecai was speaking into her life said, um, for if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance shall arise for the Jews from elsewhere, but you and your father's house will perish. 
There are consequences, ladies and gents, for not saying yes to the will of God over your personal life. In her case, if Esther had not said yes to this bold and to this courageous call, it said that not only are you going to perish, but everybody in your father's house is going to perish because of these decisions that you have made against the Lord. Notice it wasn't just something that they were doing against the people. God takes it personally. He was going, no, you made this decision against me when you chose disobedience. You made this decision against me. Amen. And how many of you guys know that God is a God who fights for us? Amen. And I just want to tell you guys today, God fights for you. And I wanted to tell you guys this today. Think about any prophecy that God has spoken over your life. Amen. Look at the fruit of what that prophecy is causing in your personal life right now. Amen. Is it causing joy? Is it causing hope? Amen. Is it is the fruit of that thing good? Because, you know, the, just like the Bible says, we are known by our fruits. Amen. Whether or not you should, you know, let go of something a lot of time in your personal life is if it is producing bad fruit, if God's hand is no longer on that thing. Amen. Some of you guys, he is talking to you and, you know, he's going, Esther, you either need to step into your call or or it's going to be taken from you. There are judgment. There are consequences. Amen. Behind us not being obedient to the Lord. And it's not unconditional. Amen. It's not unconditional a lot of the time. This is a clear example from scripture. We, we see that God spoke his will over a situation. But because, you know, um, thankfully Esther was obedient. She was allowed to step into it. But it also said the consequences if she was to be disobedient to the will of the Lord. Amen. And that the Jews were not ultimately going to stay in the place of suffering. God would still deliver them regardless, but it would come through a different vessel. It would look a different way. Amen. And so all of that to say, ladies and gents, this is really, really important for us to consider when we are studying scripture and we are applying the will of God over our personal lives. Amen. So the other thing that I wanted to point out, I've got some scripture out of Jeremiah for us today too, um, but I wanted to point out uh, Jeremiah 29 11. and the first time that God showed me this it blew my mind like it was powerful to me you know that scripture says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope in a future you know one time God showed me this and I was like this was incredible to me do you could know that word plans is plural Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. That means God has more than one way that he can take you in your path. He has more than one way that he can bring deliverance to you in your personal life. For I know the plans. And guess what? All of God's plans are good. You're not getting something mediocre. You're not getting leftovers. If it wasn't, you know, whatever you had pictured in your brain originally, God's always been in control this entire time. Amen. Of your lives, ladies and gents. And so I think that sometimes we put God in a box and we go, God, you know, I know that I've heard from you. You're going to move in this specific way. And God goes, no, take me outside of your box. Amen. You know, I move based on obedience a lot of the time. That's how God moves in our personal lives. Amen. And so again, sometimes prophecies are conditional, dependent upon the actions and the attitudes of the people addressed or involved. Amen. We see this in the book of Jonah. You know, Jonah was sent to go prophesy to this people group and, you know, it was saying that destruction would come if they didn't get their act together, but because they got their act together, that prophecy didn't have to come to pass that way. Amen. Sometimes it's dependent upon a place of obedience. Amen. And even if deliverance doesn't come one way, amen, God can raise up someone else or something else to bring his will to pass ultimately. Amen. And this is the other phrase that God really wanted me to point out to you guys today. Prophecy is an expression of God's love for his people. Amen. Prophecy is an expression of God's heart. If it starts to bring bondage into your personal life, it's not of God. Amen. You got to check the fruit. Is the fruit coming from the enemy over this particular thing or is the fruit birthed from God? Amen. And so I want to tell you guys today, obedience and disobedience can and will affect whether or not a prophecy comes to pass sometimes. Amen. And so I wanted to tell you guys a silly example of this, and then I'll hop into our scripture from the book of Jeremiah today. Um, so there was a guy, and I think I've told you guys this story before, but God was bringing it up again. There was a guy who um, God spoke to him early on in his life that he was supposed to write a book 
for the Lord. Amen. Told him the title, everything, you know, and said, you're supposed to go and write this book. Well, this guy waited on it for like 30, 40 years of his life. Just never got around to writing the book. Well, he was walking through a bookstore one day and he looked around and all of a sudden different author, he saw the exact title of his book on the bookshelf at the bookstore. And he was furious. And he starts having this conversation with God. And he was like, God, you promised me that book. That was supposed to be my book that was published. I had that outline for this thing. I knew exactly what I was supposed to do. God, you prophesied over me that I would put this book out. And God said, yeah, but you weren't obedient. You didn't step out on it. You didn't act on this thing. Amen. And because of your disobedience, because you wouldn't do it, I wasn't going to not let this message get out there because my people still needed to hear it regardless. Therefore, I raised up another. I raised up someone else. Amen. So that, you know, this message could still get across. The prophecy was dependent upon a place of obedience and because he was not obedient he lost that opportunity and the mantle was given to another who am i talking to today ladies and gents it can be fully god's will for you to step into something or to have something in your personal life but sometimes if we're not obedient to that thing we can lose it amen and it only ends up hurting us in the end when we do this stuff ladies and gents you know i want to remind you guys that saul was prophesied to be king and he was allowed to walk in it for a little bit but again what was it that caused him to forfeit that kingship disobedience amen you know god had to raise up someone else who had an obedient heart he had to raise up king david in that circumstance amen god cares about the place of obedience in our personal lives Amen. Let me read you guys this scripture out of Jeremiah because I thought this was really, really good. Um, okay. This comes from Jeremiah 18, 1 through 11. And I'm reading this off of my computer because I had my actual Bible bookmarked with the Esther scripture. Okay. It says, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house and there I will give you my message. So I went to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. I want you guys to remember that phrase. That's going to be important in a second, okay? So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as he seemed best to him. Notice that another pot was raised up. Another thing was raised up. Amen. Because the first one was marred. Let's keep going. All right. Then the word of the Lord came to me. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does, declares the Lord, like the clay in the hand of the potter. So are you in my hand, O house of Israel. God's going, never forget who's ultimately in control of this. Amen. Let's keep going. All right. If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warned of repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster that I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and to be planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. You guys catch that? God can reconsider the prophecy. He can reconsider circumstances. Amen. Let's keep going. All right. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each of you, and reform your ways and actions. Wow. What an eye-opening scripture. Amen. And so basically what God is saying is, you know, I can go and I can uproot things that I had originally wanted to plant because of the place of disobedience. That's exactly what happened with Saul. Amen. He uprooted him because of a place of disobedience. Amen. God shifted the situation because it was no longer in alignment. Amen. It was not getting obedient. Amen. And so I think that this is very important for us, you know, to consider in our personal lives, right? Um, there was another part that I wanted to reread to you guys. Um, so let's go back to the marred piece because that was part that was very significant. Okay. In verse four, it says, but the pot he was shaping. So God was, think of this symbolically, right? Our lives are like pottery, amen? God shapes and molds our lives to look like what he wants it to look like in our personal lives, amen? And so it says, but the pot he was shaping from the clay 
was marred in his hands. In other words, the clay was not willing to cooperate with what he was trying to do with it. Amen. And this is how we can be in our personal lives sometimes because he gives people a free will. Sometimes people are stubborn and they do not cooperate with the clay. Amen. We're marred. Amen. And God's going, all right, you can do that, but the result's going to be different. Amen. It says it was marred in his hands. Watch what the potter did after that. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. He goes, okay, starting over. This vessel's not going to work. The way I was going to do this wasn't going to work. The clay is not cooperating with me here. I'm going to raise up another pot. I'm going to raise up another piece. Amen. And so I think that this is really powerful for us to consider. And then basically God starts talking to the house of Israel, which is symbolic of those who are being obedient and Christ. Oh, house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does, declares the Lord, like the clay in the hand of the potter. So are you in my hand, oh, house of Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down or destroyed, and if that nation I warned of repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster that I had planned. Okay, so we can see here that there is a time period that God allows for repentance. Amen. And so what happens here is it says, if at any time a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down or destroyed, and if... That's the phrase that I really want you guys to get in this. This is where we're talking about prophecy is conditional today. That word if is huge. Amen. It says if a nation, right, that I warned of repents for evil. In other words, that means that they have to turn and walk away from situations that are not of the Lord if they want these things to come to pass. They have to physically demonstrate, amen, that they are willing to get in alignment with disobedience. And if... Notice that keyword, if, if they do not repent, amen, um, then there are consequences, right? It says, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster that I had planned. Notice that God had the disaster planned, amen? He goes, if they repent, then they're not going to have to face the consequences, but some people don't repent. That's the sad part of this story today, ladies and gents. Sometimes the outcome is not an Esther situation, amen, where Esther repents and where Esther, or not repents, but where, you know, they don't accept the call, amen? Esther accepted the call when that quote unquote prophecy was given over her life of if you do this, you're going to be greatly rewarded for this. But if you don't, it's going to lead to your destruction. Amen. And so it says, if the nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. Verse nine. And if at another time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, notice we're talking about obedience today it says if it does not obey me right um where did it go i'm getting ahead of myself here uh and if it does evil in my sight and it does not obey me then i will reconsider the good that i had intended for it i want you guys to just pause and chew on that phrase amen it says if it does evil in my sight and refuses to obey me in other words if they, they don't obey me amen then I will reconsider the good that I had intended to do for that person or for that situation. Amen. God can reconsider things. Amen. Isn't this powerful, ladies and gents? You know, and what's interesting is, you know, that word reconsider, I think, is really important. So you can fully have heard from God over a situation in your personal life. Amen. Heard from him 1,010% over something, right? You know, and if you had never heard from him in the first place, God wouldn't have used the word reconsider. Amen. Reconsider is a word that God is using because he is thinking about something again. Amen. He is doing something new. Amen. And so God says that if there is not obedience over a situation, if you continue to do evil in my sight, and if this vessel, this pottery is not willing to obey, God reconsiders the situation. Amen. And he goes, all right, you know, if you're not going to do this, then destruction can come. But if you are willing to do this, then you're willing to, then I'm going to bless you. Amen. But again, you know, God doesn't just let this stuff linger forever, ladies and gents. Amen. When Saul was disobedient, he got confronted with it very quickly. God called him out and said, all right, your days as king are numbered. I'm not allowing you to stay in this position anymore. 
Amen. Because he was disobedient, he picks the path of disobedience. And God didn't just let that sit for forever. Amen. He was like, nope, time's up. Amen. You know, I am raising up a David who is faithful and who is obedient. Um, Tracy, we're in Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. Okay. Uh, and then let's read verse 11 now. It says, Now therefore say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, This is what the Lord says. Look, I am preparing a disaster for you, and I am devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and actions. In other words, God's going, Okay, you picked your path. Now disaster is coming. Amen. He's going, I never wanted this for you. My will was over here, but I'm not going to let the people of Israel be punished because of your actions. Amen. I'm not going to let this whole people group that is in a place of obedience be punished and not reap their reward because you're over here in la-la land doing whatever you want to do. Amen. And so that's, I mean, in a nutshell, I mean, it's not that long today, ladies and gents, but that's kind of the lesson that God wanted me to pop on and tell you guys today is that sometimes prophecy is conditional. If it, and if it wasn't conditional, there wouldn't be an if then statement in the Bible behind it. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you guys today, you know, look at the fruit of what that prophecy is bringing in your personal life. Amen. You know, God's heart for you is love. He brings freedom. If that prophecy, if that thing is bringing bondage to you in your personal life, you know, look at the fruit behind this stuff. We know God's nature. We know his character. We know who he is. Amen. And some of you guys need to get a fresh word over your situations today. Amen. Because God's heart for you is love. And, you know, he wants to use a people who are in a place of obedience. And this is also kind of a warning word that should get all of our attention. I'm including myself in this too. You know, when God tells you to act on something, you need to be obedient to that thing or you could lose it. Kind of like the guy with the book example. Amen. You know, God put that book idea on this guy. He truly wanted to use him to get that message out. But because the guy did not act on the book, he raised it up to another person. He gave that guy a lot of years to get obedient with that thing. And finally, God had to cut it off and say, no more. Amen. This message still has to get out to my people. I'm going to raise up another. I'm going to use this in a different way than I had originally planned. Amen. So something good for all of us to chew on today. Amen. Hope you guys are having a great Saturday and I will chat with you again soon.